The first Christmas gift. The angel Gabriel told Mary, You will have a baby. How? asked Mary. I'm not married. God's Holy Spirit will come down to you. The baby will be God's son. Mary believed him. Mary was engaged to Joseph, but he didn't believe her story. So an angel visited him too. Mary's not lying. Her baby will be God's son. You must name him Jesus. Many months passed. Then they traveled to Bethlehem, Joseph's hometown, to be counted by the government. After that long journey, Mary was ready to give birth. But all the inns in Bethlehem were full. So God's son was born in a stable, wrapped in cloths, and laid on a bed of hay. They named him Jesus. That night, an angel appeared to some shepherds in the hills near Bethlehem. Good news, the angel said. Your Savior has been born. He's in Bethlehem lying in a manger. Suddenly, more angels appeared. So many of them that they filled the skies. Praise God in heaven, they all sang. And may everyone who pleases him receive his peace. When the angels left, the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem. They found the baby, their savior, lying on a bed of hay. It was just as the first angel had said. After the shepherds had seen Jesus, they went through the town. They were very excited. They told everyone what had happened, and they praised God for what he had done. The Beloved Son Before God sends his special Savior, said the prophet Malachi, a messenger will come to prepare the way for him. So John came before Jesus, preaching by the Jordan River. Prepare the way for the Lord, John said. God is sending someone very special to his people. Change your ways. Turn from the bad things you have done. Be baptized. So that's what people did. Are you the promised one? They asked. No said John. I'm not worthy to even carry his sandals. He will do amazing things. You'll see. Jesus came to John to be baptized. When John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God 
who takes away the sins of the world. I want you to baptize me, Jesus said. No, John replied. I need to be baptized by you. Trust me, said Jesus. This is the right thing to do. So John baptized Jesus. God's Spirit came down on Jesus like a dove. This is my son, God said. I love him. He pleases me very much. A Test in the Desert God's Spirit led Jesus into the desert. He had nothing to eat for 40 days and nights. After that, Jesus was very hungry. Knowing that Jesus was hungry, Satan tempted him. He pointed to a rock and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these rocks to become bread. Jesus answered Satan using God's words from the Bible. It's not just bread that keeps people alive, he said. Their lives also depend on what God says. Next, Satan took Jesus to the top of the temple. If you are the Son of God, jump off. The scriptures say that God's angels will rescue you. So Jesus used God's word to give his second answer. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, he said, quoting again from the Bible. Finally, Satan took Jesus to a mountain and showed him all the world's kingdoms and wealth. This can be yours, he said. If you bow down and worship me. Go away, Satan, Jesus commanded. Then he quoted God's word one more time. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. As soon as Jesus said it, Satan left him. Then angels came and cared for him. Jesus had faced temptation and hadn't sinned, not even once. The King and the Kingdom Jesus traveled teaching about the kingdom of heaven, and crowds followed him. They didn't know yet that Jesus is the king, but he taught them how to live as people of his kingdom. People do good, said Jesus, because of the good in their hearts. People do evil when evil is in their hearts. God wants to make your heart like his heart.
Don't worry about things like food and clothes, said Jesus. Put God first in your life. Obey Him. Trust Him. He will make sure that you have what you need. Jesus taught this prayer. Father God, your name is holy. Reign on earth like you reign in heaven. Meet our needs today. Help us obey you. All power is yours forever. Then Jesus told a story. One man built his house on a rock. A big storm came. Because the house was built on a rock, it did not fall down. Another man built his house on soft and shifting sand. A big storm came. Because the house was built on sand, it fell down with a crash. The things I teach you are like the rock, said Jesus. Put my words into action, and you will be like the man who built his house on a rock. Through the roof. Full! The house was full! Jesus was in the house, teaching and healing, and everyone wanted to see him. <laughs> Some men had a friend who could not walk. They believed that Jesus could heal him, so they carried him to the house on a mat. Because the house was so full, they couldn't get in. So they carried their friend up the steps to the flat roof and started tearing up the tiles. They opened a hole in the roof. Everyone in the house looked up, amazed. Then they lowered their friend into the middle of the crowd. They thought Jesus would heal their friend. Instead, Jesus said to him, Your sins are forgiven. The religious leaders were very unhappy. Only God can forgive sins, they grumbled. What's easier, asked Jesus, to forgive a man's sins or make him walk? To show you that I have God's power to forgive sins, I will heal his legs. Pick up your mat and walk home, said Jesus to the man. And he did! His friends cheered! And so did everyone else. Now the house was filled with praise. Demons destroyed. Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee. They met a man with evil spirits who lived in a cemetery. He screamed constantly and cut himself with stones.
Jesus told the spirits to leave. Don't hurt us, Jesus, the spirits cried. My name is Lot, said the man. There are lots of evil spirits in me. Well, you have to leave him, said Jesus. You have no choice. The evil spirits were scared. There was a large herd of pigs nearby. Then send us into the pigs. Jesus let the evil spirits enter the pigs. The whole herd rushed down a steep bank into the lake and drowned. The people who took care of the pigs told everyone in town what had happened. The townspeople came to the cemetery. They saw that Jesus had made the man well. Time to get up. Jairus, a leader of the synagogue, fell at Jesus' feet. My little girl is dying, he cried. If you lay your hands on her, I know that she will live. Pushing through the crowd, they met some men from Jairus' house. Your daughter is already dead, they said. Don't be afraid, said Jesus. Believe, and your daughter will be healed. They arrived at Jairus' house and found people weeping for the girl. Why are you weeping? Jesus asked. The girl's not dead. She's only sleeping. The people laughed at him. Jesus and three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, went into the house with Jairus and his wife. The little girl was lying there, just as everyone had said. Jesus took her hand. Then he said, Stand up, little girl. And she did. She even walked around the room. Jairus and his wife were amazed. Jesus told them not to tell anyone what he had done. Now, said Jesus, I think this girl needs something to eat. The Big Picnic Jesus had finished teaching. Everyone was hungry. Send them away to buy food, his disciples said. But Jesus wanted to show the people that they could trust God. Why don't you feed them? Jesus asked. It would take a year's wages to buy bread for them all, his disciples cried. How much food do you have? asked Jesus. There is a boy here, said Andrew, who has five loaves of bread and two little fish. Jesus smiled. Perfect. 
Tell the people to sit down on the grass. So the people sat down all over the mountainside. Jesus thanked God for the bread and the fish. Then he broke them into pieces for his disciples to hand out. Jesus' disciples passed out bread and fish to the whole crowd. There were 5,000 men and lots of women and children, too. Everyone ate as much as they wanted. Afterwards, the disciples gathered up the leftovers. There were 12 baskets full from just five loaves and two fish. The people knew they could trust God to care for them. Coming home. Why does Jesus spend time with people who do bad things? The religious leaders wondered. So Jesus told them a story about God's love. This is how it went. A man had two sons. The younger son asked for the money he would get when the father died. Heartbroken, the father gave his younger son half of his property. The son moved to a distant country. He wasted all the money. Then a famine came, and he had to feed pigs. He wished he could eat the pigs' food. My father's servants do better than this, he thought. I'll return home and admit that I have sinned against him and God. Maybe he'll make me one of his servants. The son went home. While he was still far away, his father ran to him and hugged him. I'm not worthy to be your son, he told his father. Bring my son my best robe, the father told his servants. Put a ring on his finger. Roast our fattest calf. My boy was lost and now he's found. The older son was angry when he heard about the celebration. It's not fair, he complained. I work faithfully and get nothing. He wastes your money and gets a party. All that's mine is yours, the father replied. Your brother was dead. Now he's alive. He was lost. Now he's found. So what can we do but celebrate? The Donkey and the King It was Passover time. Jerusalem was filled with people. When Jesus reached the mountain, the donkey and the king. 
Coming home. The donkey and the king. It was Passover time. Jerusalem was filled with people. When Jesus reached the Mount of Olives, a hill overlooking Jerusalem, he told two of his disciples to find a donkey. They found the donkey and put their cloaks on it. Jesus rode on the donkey, fulfilling the Bible verse that says, Here comes your king, Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. Jesus rode the donkey down to Jerusalem. Many people remembered his miracles and joined him. They put cloaks and palm branches on the road before him to honor him. <laughs> they hoped that Jesus was God's promised Savior, so they shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! <laughs> The whole world is following him, the Pharisees grumbled. Tell them to be quiet, Jesus. Even if everyone stopped shouting, Jesus replied, the stones would still praise me. A Goodbye Meal Jesus healed sick people and fed hungry people. He loved outcasts and taught everyone about God's kingdom. But the religious leaders didn't like his teaching and were jealous of him. They hated Jesus so much that they decided to have him killed. They gave 30 pieces of silver to Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, to hand Jesus over to them. Then Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover. While they ate, Jesus said, sadly, One of you will betray me. Surprised, they each replied, It's not me, Lord! It's true, said Jesus. One of you eating here will betray me. Not me, Lord, said Judas. You know it is, Jesus replied. Go, do it quickly. So Judas left. Jesus took bread and thanked God for it. He broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Remember me when you eat this. It's my body given for you. Then Jesus picked up a cup and thanked God for it. Everyone drink from this cup, he said. This is my blood, poured out so that sins may be forgiven.
When they had finished eating, Jesus and his disciples sang a hymn together. Then they walked to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. In the Garden After they ate together, Jesus told his disciples, Tonight you will abandon me. Not me, said Peter boldly. I will never leave you, Jesus. Jesus sighed. Before the rooster crows to greet the morning, you will say, three times, that you don't know me. I'll die with you before I do that, Peter said. When they came to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus asked his disciples to pray with him. The disciples were tired. They fell asleep. Jesus prayed alone to the Father. Jesus knew his enemies wanted him dead. He also knew that dying was God's plan for him. Show me another way, he prayed. Otherwise, I will do what you ask. Suddenly, a light shone, there was shouting, and everyone woke up. An angry crowd approached, sent by the religious leaders. Judas kissed Jesus to show them which man to arrest. I'm the one you're looking for, said Jesus. When he said this, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then they grabbed Jesus and took him to the religious leaders. Most of Jesus' disciples fled, but Peter followed behind. He waited in a courtyard to see what would happen. Weren't you with Jesus? Someone asked. Frightened, Peter said, No! Two other people asked the same thing. You're wrong, Peter said. I don't even know Jesus. Peter denied Jesus three times. When he heard the rooster crow, he wept bitterly. It is finished. The religious leaders told the governor, Pilate, that Jesus was dangerous and wanted to be king. Pilate asked Jesus, Is this true? I am king, Jesus answered, but not of this world. Jesus is innocent, said Pilate. There's no reason to kill him. I will set him free. But the crowd shouted, Kill him!
So Pilate had his soldiers whip Jesus. They forced a thorny crown on his head. Then they laid a wooden cross on his back and led him up a hill. There on that hill, the Roman soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross, hands and feet. Then they raised it high. Jesus hung there between two criminals. Around noon, the sky turned dark. Jesus' friends wept. The religious leaders laughed and said, You saved other people. Why can't you save yourself? Forgive them, Father, said Jesus. When the time came for Jesus to die, he closed his eyes and said, It is finished. He had completed what he had come to do because of his great love. One of Jesus' followers, a man named Joseph, put Jesus' body in a brand new tomb. He rolled a huge stone in front of it. A long, sad Friday was over. A happy Sunday. Sunday morning, some women went to put burial spices on Jesus' body. They knew a big stone was covering the tomb's entrance and wondered how they would move it. When they arrived, the stone had already been moved. Jesus' body was gone, and there were angels in the tomb. Jesus is alive, the angel said. Go tell his disciples. The women told the disciples, and Peter and John ran to Jesus' tomb to see for themselves. All they found were Jesus' burial cloths. They went back home confused. Later, the disciples were gathered together in a room. They were talking about what had happened when Jesus appeared to them. They were terrified. They thought he was a ghost. Don't worry, said Jesus. See my hands and feet? It's me. Touch me. Go on. You can't touch a ghost, and ghosts don't eat either, but I'm feeling really hungry. So he ate some fish. Then he taught them. The scriptures are clear, he said. The Messiah was supposed to suffer and die, and then be raised from the dead. Now tell the world what you have seen. Let everyone know that their sins can be forgiven if they turn to God. It's possible because of what I have done. Into the clouds.
It was time for Jesus to go to heaven. He led his disciples to the top of a mountain near Jerusalem. Here's what I want you to do, he said. Wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promised Holy Spirit. Then tell everyone about me. Go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and then to the rest of the world. Make many disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them everything you learn from me. I will always be with you. When he had said this, Jesus rose into the sky. Up he went until he disappeared into a cloud. His disciples watched him. They stood there, staring into the sky. Two men, dressed in white, appeared. Jesus has gone to heaven, they explained. He will come back in the same way. So the disciples obeyed Jesus and went to Jerusalem.